Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley. I'm a soil scientist and on this channel we take that science and we apply it to gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds loud, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that notification bell. If you are returning, hello, how are you guys doing? I'm so excited you're back and by heavy duty demand, we're gonna be talking about the coconut choir and the science behind it and exactly what application it has in the garden. Now, if you like this video and you like the peat moss video we did before, give this video a thumbs up and we will do a comparison between the two. We can get the video to around 100 likes, then I will go ahead and I will do a video that is kind of peat moss versus coconut choir. So that will give me enough time to test this stuff out in the garden because I have never used it in the garden. And then I will be able to give you guys a great video and awesome feedback on kind of the pros and cons of both. So as promised by the enormous amount of people wanting this video, we're going to get into coconut choir. We're going to be talking about exactly what it is, where it comes from on the coconut, to how it's harvested and packaged and brought to your front doorstep, to its properties in the garden, such as pH, nutrient holding capability, etc., and so forth. And then thirdly, I have a bag that I purchased. It's in the backyard. We're gonna go in the backyard and you are going to watch me open a bag for the first time ever. And I will give you the soil scientist thoughts on the coconut choir itself. Coconut choir is not the outer shell of the coconut and it's not the inner shell either. It's the in-between space. So I'll pop up a photo of exactly where this is harvested from. To make it more manageable in the garden and use it as a garden substrate, it's technically not a soil, same as peat moss is not a soil. Um, to make this an appropriate substrate, they have to either soak it in water for up to six months or with new advancements, they have mechanical techniques that involve water still to kind of expedite the decomposition process. So then the choir can be removed from the coconut and then processed to your front door. Typically the coconut choir is ripped off with rakes after it's decomposed because it is nice and soft. Coconut choir typically comes from Sri Lanka and India from what I've seen, and it's considered an environmentally friendly substitute to peat moss, which you can watch my peat moss video on exactly kind of the hullabaloo about peat moss and its sustainability factors. But one palm tree can produce up to 150 coconuts in one year. So how many coconuts does it take to fill up a bag? I am not sure. I cannot find the stats on that. Um, but I mean, Sustainable, yes, it's um, always replenishing itself every year. You're obviously gonna get coconuts, but I wouldn't go as far to say as environmentally friendly. You still have to take into consideration that in some places this isn't a fair trade item and people are getting paid very low wages to harvest this stuff. As you can see, it does not look like a enjoyable job. <laughs> very labor intensive and exhausting. Um, so there's that. And then there's also the fact that if it is coming from overseas or even here in Canada, we don't have palm trees, so it's coming from pretty far ways away. You do have to take into consideration in my mind, um, the cost and the fuel and the infrastructure to even get that coconut coir up to Canada, for example, that's just me. Um, if you take all those factors into each other, I would say coconut choir and peat moss is on a level playing field, especially for us Canadians here, um, just because of the environmental impacts of stemming up with coconut choir instead of fruits and vegetables that could be used to feed human beings here in, in Canada. That's just my personal thoughts. I don't, uh, I wouldn't tout it as this awesome environmentally friendly product but a renewable resource yes it does renew itself i mean peat moss renews itself too so i don't know 
I'm really on the fence that I just don't see it being just leagues better than peat moss. It's still a commercial item that's being purchased in huge amounts. So there's going to be some kind of environmental impact. And I would, I would consider it a level playing field when it comes to Canadian um, gardeners and what they're using. So there isn't a lot of studies that I found on coconut choir. So I'm just going off of kind of consumer reviews and what people are saying about it. I'm excited to try it out in my garden to see if some of these hold up to the test, but I'm not totally convinced that this is 100% correct, but supposedly the porosity is awesome. So it's a really good draining soil. It has the perfect spacing of nutrients, air, and water. If you haven't watched the Soil Science series and the physics of soil, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, be sure to check that out. But it's supposed to have the perfect balance and it's also supposed to be very good at draining. But then simultaneously, they'll say it's really good at moisture retention. So it makes me just think that it's one of those uh, that just came out of the market and it's being hooplawed up as this amazing thing. It can't do both. <laughs> it's got to do one or the other. So I'm assuming it's going to act the same as peat moss. I'm not 100% for sure. Uh, the pH is drastically higher than peat moss. It is around the 6.8. Um, so you could not use coconut choir to mend your soil if you're trying to get it more acidic. It's just not, simply not going to work. It's running around that 7. However, over time, um, there are studies that came out that showed coconut choir as it degraded, started getting around 5.6 pH. So that is interesting because that would mean the older your potting soil is that is coconut based, you'd have to manage that soil differently and you'd have to amend it differently every year to kind of uh, counteract that pH drop because as we have spoken about in other videos, it's all about that nutrient scale and you want to make sure that you are in the wheelhouse where those nutrients are bioavailable and they're not held up or suspended in the system due to lower pHs or higher pHs for that matter. It also touts a very high cation exchange capacity and I would believe this if it's going to be the same as peat moss it's probably going to be very similar but they're saying that you have to watch out for calcium and magnesium deficiencies with coconut choir i mean yeah but i don't think that has anything to do with the cation exchange capacity i think it's related to the cation ex exchange capacity but then when you top it off with a 6.8 ph then yeah, you're gonna run into calcium magnesium deficiency because again, if you look at the pH scale, calcium and magnesium aren't as a bioavailable. Yes, you're probably gonna see um, a deficiency in calcium magnesium. So there's two warnings about coconut coir before we go outside. The first one being that you have to watch out because some of the processing involves salt water. So because this is done in third world countries, they will kind of decompose or process these coconut husks in salt water because it expedites it or it speeds the process up if they are using the very traditional method, which can take up to six months. What this means is by the time you get it into your garden, it has a very high salt content. And as we know, plants don't like salt because it affects the natural osmosis balance between the root and the upper biomass of the plant and the soil down below. So that is something to watch out for. What you're going to want to look for on your brand is if it was salt treated and then if it was washed with fresh water. That fresh water treatment after the salt decomposition treatment, which is called retting, <laughs> I believe it's called retting. Um, after that process, if they wash it out with fresh water, it's going to wash all that sodium out. So then it's not going to affect your plant. And the other really important thing to note is if you are getting this in a block, then you should make sure that there's no chemical treatment done to it. The moment there's any chemical treatments done to that block or that compressed brick, you are no longer organic. And I'm not 100% for sure what chemicals they're using, but it's probably a polymer or some sort of uh, water soluble or um, easily weathered kind of matting that goes on it. Something similar to what you'd see in a slow release uh, fertilizer, which again, that is 
uh, usually a polymer. Well, there's three types of coconut products you can get. There are the husks, which are the chunks. There is the fibers, which is the actual fiber. And then there's the pith, which is what you as a gardener are going to want to use, is the pith. And this is what's gonna look the most similar to peat moss. And that is what I'm expecting this bag outside to look like. So let's go outside and do a soil scientist's first impression on coconut choir. I've never purchased this. Full disclaimer, I do not know what I'm about to expect, but I'm excited to go see what it may be. So here we are with the coconut choir that I purchased, which is black gold by Sun Grow Horticulture. And I thought it was only fair if I reviewed the Sun Grow Horticulture brand uh, because they are my favorite peat mouse brand as well. It's called the Sunshine Mix. Um, so let's open this up and see what's inside. I'm excited to see this. I've never done this. Oh, and <laughs> I promised you outside, we're inside because someone's celebrating Father's Day in their backyard. They're drinking, they're having a good time. I'm not gonna interrupt it. I don't want you guys to hear the hooting and hollering. So we're indoors. So. <coughs> oh, that's dusty. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll show you guys what I got. It looks like a mix of the pilt and the fiber. It's not a... So this is the product that I got. And like I said, it's a mix of the pilt and the fiber. So, um, very husky feeling. Very husky. So that is the exact same stuff that you put in the reptile tank. Um, I'd argue this has a lower cation exchange capacity than peat moss actually, um, just because the porosity, the pore spaces are gonna be larger rather than smaller. That's the first thing I'll note. Um, will it drain better than peat moss? Yes, it will, I can already see that. And I also would beg to differ. I will try it if we do the peat moss Verse coconut choir a video but i'm thinking that this it won't have that hydrophobic effect either um so you wouldn't have to you know add a cash shell soap or something to it I, I have a funny feeling that this won't have this but i'm excited to use this in the garden um i can tell right off the bat it's going to drain well it's going to retain moisture and things you may need to watch out for is obviously moisture retention um lack of nutrients. I can already tell this is not going to have a ton of nutrients in it. And then nutrients management. So over time and just in the initial stages, how you're gonna fertilize, how you're gonna add nutrients to this, I would assume this is very low in any sort of micronutrient. And macro wise, I would also uh, lean towards it being low too, just based on what I'm seeing here. But I just wanna check the back of the bag and see if I can figure out where this came from and how long it took to travel to Saskatchewan where I'm located. So there's nothing on this package telling me where the coconut product came from. So I don't know if this came from overseas. I don't know if this came from Florida. Um, all it says on it is Ciba Beach, Alberta. And I know Ciba Beach, Alberta doesn't uh, have coconut trees or uh, palm trees. So like that. like that. This is Penny. She's been in video. No, you're not gonna. No. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Hmm. Great litter box material as well. Anyways, I can't tell where it's from, so I'm assuming it traveled. All I know is it was packaged in Ciba Beach, Alberta. That's all I got for you guys. Um, I'll check Sun Grow Horticulture's website to see where they source this stuff from 
And if I find out, I will be sure to pop it somewhere over here. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what video you would like to see next with a science-based spin on it. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.